Demon Slayer is one of those anime where it's hard to escape. I started watching Demon Slayer two years ago. I was happily watching Gintama, then my friend threatened me, if you don't watch Demon Slayer, you're gay. So, for the understandable reasons, I paused my binge watch of Gintama and started watching the first season of Demon Slayer. And I thought it was good. It has fantastic animation, a straightforward story, and really simple premise. Tanjiro Kamaru becomes a Demon Slayer to, well, slay demons and, well, also try to save his sister, Nezuko, to become human again. Then you start this journey of him technically being a Demon Slayer. Really simple and good, right? Technically, it all has elements that made it really popular, such as the Hashiras, which are very colorful in design and personality. You got someone like Rengoku for someone who just appeared at the end of season 1, and the Mugen Train <laughs> movie, everyone seems to love Rengoku. Or you can have someone like Shinobu who got the massive Ara Ara energy. Or you can have Tengen Uzui, the most flamboyant of them all. If your favorite is Zenitsu, then you definitely have daddy issues. Now, with all this, you might think, hmm, this sounds like a good anime. And you are right, it is good. And that's it. That's the extent of Demon Slayer, it's just good. For me, it's more to the okay side. Season 1 was solid, had enough episodes to set up a decent story, then it continued to the Mugen Train movie which is really good. But for me, season 2 was not anything special to me. The term carried by animation didn't pack any meaning until the second season. The second season starts with the aftermath of Rengoku's death. Of course, everyone was devastated, and Tanjiro goes to Rengoku's dad and gets absolutely fucking floored. I'm not finished. Since Rengoku's father is a man going through a midlife crisis in his mid-30s, whilst also abusing his only son who isn't a fucking donut, Tanjiro absolutely fucking floored him. Anyways, for some reason, I actually don't know why he went there or his reason to go there, but that happened and we go straight to meeting Tengen Uzui who is a lolicon apparently and straight up flamboyant. Along the way, they crack up some jokes, which leads to my first problem with Demon Slayer, which is the jokes are never funny. Funny, funny, funny. I don't know, it's just cringy and it just revolves around poorly drawn faces and a lot of screaming. I know this is a subjective take, guys, but come on, I bet on my dick getting chopped off that the most you laugh off of a Demon Slayer joke is just a silent chuckle. I guarantee that Zenitsu's Nezuko-chan! 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 is never funny. It never will be. That whole fucking dream section in the Mugen Train movie, I was absolutely flabbergasted on why does it exist for some reason. And the whole time I was just like... Zenitsu and Inosuke's personality is the running gag of the show. Inosuke being hot-headed and aggressive, and Zenitsu technically being a whiny bitch and a simp. For the first few episodes of the first season, it's okay, because they haven't reached to a point where their personality becomes really annoying and boring. Inosuke is fine, but Zenitsu on the other hand is just the worst. I really feel like their whole character is just based on this one gimmick, which gets old and stupid so quickly. Also, the three wives that were introduced in the second season are just not in interesting at all. They weren't explored in the second season, and why did they decide that having a second Zenitsu was a good idea? It seems that the characters are better off when they shut their mouth, is what I thought until all the inner monologues that Tanjiro and everyone does. Demon Slayer Season 2 is overloaded with monologues, to the point where monologues are just useless. Although monologues are good if used correctly, but there is an extreme use of monologues which causes many of the fight scenes that are supposed to be flashy and intense to be slowed down and doesn't pack any punch to it. The monologues are just explaining things because it just assumes that we're three-year-olds that are incapable of processing any information given right in front of us as it is happening. We know what's going on, okay? It's not hard to know if a situation is going shit or the enemy is getting stronger. It's so immersion breaking. 
it really is. In fact, when the recap was happening, they skipped all the inner monologues, so it's literally just full-on fight scenes. No tickling your balls to get your pre come out, and it's just 100 times better. It's ironic at this point. Sometimes the dialogue can get pretty weird and stupid, like when Daki, the Emoto Demon fucking screams, I mean, I know she's in fact still a little sister, but we know that she has been a little sister for fucking hundreds of years. And she still screams something like that at the top of her lungs? Did she not grow up at all or something? It just feels really weird and it doesn't need to be in there. Speaking of demons, we have these two demons that are brother and sister. Which again, just like the Inosuke and Zenitsu, the demons' personality are just based on one gimmick and that they are siblings. The powers that they have are pretty cool I guess, but the poison is ultimately useless in the fight because things happened. So when they both eventually die, it goes to a flashback of them when they're still humans. Of course, just like any other demon backstory so far, it's a tragic one. But for this one, it's like they forced the backstory on us to feel emotional for these demons. I think this is done very cheesy and less impactful. Just a quick way and easy way to get some emotion out of the viewer, I feel. Also, the flashback didn't show a lot of the bond that those two had. What I saw was that Gyutaro taking advantage of his sister and his sister developing some sort of Stockholm Syndrome. Doesn't explain why they have that sibling bond deeply when they were demons. The writing in Demon Slayer is not anything great. Sometimes it just can get outright stupid. One good example is when Inosuke somehow after getting stabbed in the heart and came back again to fight because he can shift his organs and is immune to poison just because he lived in the mountain? How lazy can you be to write that shit? I feel like as to why the supposed writer wrote it that way was because the writer decided for Inosuke to get stabbed in a crucial moment then wanted him to do like a surprise comeback but is too lazy to write as to why he survived the stab to the heart and just said, I guessed he lived in the mountains? Also, suddenly Nezuko can burn off demon poison without any explanation before and after the fact it just happened. Tanjiro going absolute fucking god mode because Ducky made him angry. Zenitsu going godspeed with the narrative needed it most and not using it before. These ass pulls made the fight scenes were supposed to have stakes at line. Consequences for not being strong enough and making mistakes become something that put me back on my seat and just slouch back. When you're doing a fight scene, it is important to have mistakes and consequences because it is what set the outcome of the scene and the sort of uneasiness or tension you will feel during the fight scenes. The only time they didn't pull it was during Rengoku vs Akaza and that's why I love the movie because there's tension, things that put you on the edge of your seat and these ass pulls are just already stupid enough and they have to win a lot of the epic things in season 2. Of course, the fight where it peaked the most is at episode 10, the last big battle, where everyone suddenly is ab still able to fight intensely and very fucking fast is the best battle in Demon Slayer so far. The visuals, CGI and choreography and a lot of screaming made the scene very enjoyable, where it actually made me edge of my seat. The fight was more fast paced in this one compared to the big fight in the movie and in season 1, which was a sight to see. I think at this point it shouldn't be a surprise whenever UFO table outdo themselves. I mean they did it with fate, it shouldn't be any surprise if they did it for Demon Slayer. Many people praise the fight scene at episode 10 to be like the best animated scene of all time, but I don't think it even comes close to Heaven's Feel 2 and 3's big fights. Rider vs Saber Altar definitely blows it out of the water. Demon Slayer doesn't stand a chance. But regardless of how good the Rider vs Saber Altar fight was, the final big fight of Demon Slayer season 2 was for me really fantastic. So yeah. Demon Slayer is one of those anime where you just switch your brain off and just enjoy pure good animation and just a generic simple standard shonen stuff. 
Its sole purpose is to be just standard, and I think it deserves an okay score despite what I said. It's also one of the reasons as to why it's so insanely popular because it's literally just you sit down, just watch, and enjoy without having to worry about anything else. This is the type of mindset you need to watch for Demon Slayer. Most animes that I've watched, you need to at least give it some kind of thought while or after watching it as to why it's such a great show. That's why I didn't find Demon Slayer to be the apex of anime like everyone else did. If you want to switch your brain off without thinking of anything at all like character depth, the writing, plot pacing, and just enjoy some anime, then you should give it a shot. I'll give Demon Slayer Season 2 a 6 out of 10. Why? Well, because I can understand why people like it. If you look at it like a casual watcher's view, and it's not a bad anime. It's just that Demon Slayer is simple, generic, and unapologetic, which makes it not an interesting anime for me. So yeah, I think that is all for me. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen so far and this channel is making a lot of progress so that's great and thank you guys for helping me reach 2000 subscribers that is insane so yeah i'll see you next time and i'll upload more definitely <laughs>